Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Offshore windmills are wind turbines installed in the ocean or large lakes, becoming increasingly popular as a source of renewable energy. One of the challenges of installing offshore windmills is transporting and placing the towers weighing over 1,000 tons. Solutions like McGregor's Calibri crane work as self-piling cranes mounted on a jack-up vessel, having several advantages over traditional methods of transporting and installing offshore wind turbine towers. The Kincardin Offshore Wind Farm is a 50-megawatt floating offshore wind farm located approximately 9 miles off the coast of Aberdeenshire, Scotland. It's the largest floating offshore wind farm in the world and the first to use wind turbines of more than 9 megawatt capacity. The project uses five Vestas V164 9.5 megawatt turbines and one V80 2 megawatt turbine, each installed on wind float semi-submersible platforms designed by Principal Power. Its construction began in 2018 and the first turbine was installed in 2020 being fully operational in 2021 and generating enough electricity to power nearly 35,000 homes. The installation required a floater, which is the semi-submersible platform that supports the wind turbine. This was towed to the quayside in Dundee, where the wind turbine was assembled in a controlled and efficient process, thanks to the wind float technology. Similar projects include the High Wind Scotland Pilot Farm, which is the world's first commercial floating wind farm, located 18 miles off the coast of Peterhead, Scotland, with a total capacity of 30 megawatts. Such a farm consists of five 6 megawatt Siemens direct drive turbines on high wind floating monopiles. The high wind concept was developed by Statoil, now Equinor and is the first commercially viable floating wind turbine technology. Its installation was a complex and challenging undertaking. Still, it was ultimately successful by building these substructures in several European facilities, assembling them in Norway and attaching them to the Scottish seabed using suction anchors. Well, this is a, a pilot park with five turbines. The next step is, of course, to, to go bigger and into new areas. And it is also well worth uh, pointing out that we have a technology qualification program, which is very important part of Hyven Scotland. Uh, which will feed in research data into future projects. Service jack-up vessels are specialized ships used to install and maintain offshore wind turbines. They are self-elevating vessels, meaning they can raise themselves above the waterline using their legs, allowing them to work in water depths of up to 490 feet. Fred Olson Wind Carrier is one of the world's leading providers of JIVs, including the Brave Turn, a state-of-the-art vessel capable of installing the largest and most powerful wind turbines currently available. It has a heavy lift crane to lower and install the foundation structure.
This may involve drilling into the seabed or using gravity anchors. Lifting and securing the wind turbine tower onto the foundation using specialized bolting and welding techniques. The manufacturing process for wind turbines is a complex and multifaceted undertaking involving various steps, from the initial design and engineering to the final assembly and testing. The tower, which supports the wind turbine blades and nacelle, is typically made of steel. GE's Pensacola facility uses a state-of-the-art tower manufacturing process that involves robotic welding and automated cutting machines. The nacelle houses the generator and other critical components assembled from various sub-assemblies. Usually, it has a dedicated assembly line, which uses precision tools and techniques to ensure the accuracy and reliability of the nacelle. GE uses a resin infusion process to manufacture the wind turbine blades. This process is less labor intensive than traditional blade manufacturing methods, and it produces blades that are lighter and stronger. The wind turbines are also subjected to various electrical tests to ensure that they function correctly. It's an honor to lead a team of approximately 600 employees across three shifts, turning out machine heads, hubs, and drivetrains of differing model types. Fraunhofer IWES has developed new methods for the production of rotor blades for wind turbines. These methods are designed to reduce the cost and manufacturing time of rotor blades including the development of a new machine concept that can meet the demands of both production and further processing. The Blade Maker Demonstration Center is a new facility which will be used to test and demonstrate the new rotor blade production methods. The rotor blade shell is made of glass fiber. It's manufactured using a process called vacuum infusion. Impregnating the glass fibers with resin and then applying a vacuum to draw the resin into the fibers. Once the shell is cured, a prefabricated belt is loaded onto the shell, which serves as the backbone of the rotor blade and provides structural support. The rotor blade is packed up in a vacuum foil and a vacuum is applied, soaking the space between the fibers in liquid resin. After curing the resin, a special two-component glue is applied to the bridge, which is a component that connects the shell to the backbone. and shape verified, obtaining the final product. Floating wind farms are a type of offshore wind farm that utilizes floating structure to support wind turbines in deep waters. Unlike fixed-bottom offshore wind turbines, which are anchored directly to the seabed, floating wind turbines are anchored to the seabed using mooring lines and are kept afloat by buoyancy chambers.
Electrical cables connect the wind turbines to a substation on the floating structure or on shore. From there, the electricity is transmitted to the grid. Floating solar panel farms, also known as floating photovoltaic systems, are an innovative solution for generating solar energy that utilizes water bodies, such as reservoirs, lakes, and oceans as a platform for mounting solar panels. Floating solar panels utilize water bodies, which are often underutilized, as a platform for solar energy generation, alleviating land constraints. The natural cooling effect of the surrounding water significantly increases the efficiency of floating solar panels, resulting in higher energy yields. ABB, a global technology company, has significantly contributed to the development and implementation of floating solar technology. This has been done through its involvement in a 1 megawatt floating solar photovoltaic testbed in Singapore. This testbed is a groundbreaking initiative that showcases the potential of floating solar technology to address land scarcity and promote renewable energy generation. It's located in the Tenga Reservoir in West Singapore and has a total area of 2.5 acres. It's supplied with 100 kilowatt TRIO 50 solar inverters which also allow it to have a power generation capacity of one megawatt, powering up to 250 households. A suitable water body such as a pond, lake, reservoir, or wastewater treatment pond for the installation of floating solar panels is identified. Factors such as water depth, water quality, environmental impact, and Proximity to electrical infrastructure are considered for this. The floating platform buoyancy requirements are calculated based on the weight of the solar panels, support structures, and electrical components. Modular units are assembled either on-site or transported as pre-assembled units to the location. This also includes the electrical components. The floating platform with the solar panel system is placed on the water, using the mooring system to anchor the system to either the lake bed or seabed using mooring lines. The mooring system should be designed to withstand the expected wind and wave conditions at the site. Apollo Power has developed a revolutionary floating photovoltaic plant, which utilizes lightweight, self-floating solar panels called solar roll, eliminating the need for additional floaters and significantly reducing the overall weight of the system. Weighing just 0.7 pounds per square foot, this is specifically designed to fit any lightweight structure with load limits or extra curved surfaces thanks to its flexible technology. Eliminating additional floaters significantly reduces the amount of material required for construction, leading to cost savings and environmental benefits. The unique shape and structure of the self-floating panels enhance the stability of the floating PV plant, reducing the impact of waves and currents. The widespread installation and operation of massive energy sources such as solar and wind farms play a pivotal role in advancing sustainable energy initiatives. As technological advancements continue to improve efficiency and reduce costs, the continued expansion of solar and wind farms is poised to be a cornerstone in achieving a more sustainable and resilient global energy landscape. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.